Uh, by the way, excellent uh, discussion by my colleagues, uh, Dr. Nemt and uh, Dr. Julian. Uh, I'll, my name is uh, Abdullah Zaabi. I am one of the TTL fellows. Uh, today, I will not be speaking about trauma topic. Uh, I will be speaking about LVAD, uh, which is a left ventricular assist device. Uh, it was one of the questions we had in our last uh, Royal College exam. In the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes, I will try to give you a of what you need to know about clinical and for exam purposes as well. So what I will try to cover, I will tell you what is LVAD and uh, which, which type of patients who get LVAD uh, and what you, do, what you do when you see a patient with LVAD in your ED department. And I will finish with the specific complications and their management uh, as to with LVAD. Well, what is the LVAD? So basically, LVAD is an assist device for the left ventricle. Uh, it helps the left ventricle to provide uh, adequate cardiac output in patients with heart failure uh, at, at the, who are uh, at the end stage of the heart failure uh, uh, and who are resistant to medical therapy. So basically, it's, uh, you have a bump uh, that uh, takes blood from the left ventricle and uh, with a continuous flow from the bump, push it through another tube to the, uh, to the, to the aorta. Uh, uh, this is a schematic of one of the devices uh, for the LVAD known as the HeartMate 2. Uh, so basically, okay, so now you have the, the bump and you have a percutaneous uh, uh, lead, which is known as the drive line that connected to the outside uh, controller. And the co controller is connected to two batteries that provide uh, in, uh, power for both the controller as well as the, the bump. So who gets uh, an LVAD? Uh, so you have a patient with the end stage heart failure that uh, not respond to medical therapy. Uh, they get an LVAD as a bridge uh, until they get uh, a heart transpl uh, transplantation or patient uh, with the irreversible uh, myocardial uh, dysfunction like patient with uh, uh, severe myocarditis or post uh, bartem cardiomyopathy, uh, they might get an LVAD if they had a prolonged uh, recovery period until okay, their uh, native uh, left ventricle start functioning uh, back to normal. Or uh, uh, as a destination therapy in patients who are not eligible to trans uh, transplantation and they get LVAD until they die. So what do you do if any patient shows up to your AD who has an LVAD? Uh, during your rotations in, uh, in one of the hospitals, you're gonna see LVAD patients in the RVH. Uh, and, and all of the LVAD patients, when they come to the RVH image department, uh, it's the LVAD team already aware about these patients and they come directly to see the patient, the LVAD. Uh, in the ED department. So not, not, not much of the work you can do there. However, if you are start working in the community hospital and you start having a patient with ELVA that come there, you have to try to arrange uh, an early uh, transport for this patient to his ELVA center because there's no much you can do regarding these patients. So uh, if you start having a patient the ELVA and you do not, don't have help, so how you can go and assess these patients. So when you go into a room, you have to make sure you have your stethoscope, you have your ultrasound machine, and you have a manual blood pressure and Doppler. And I'll tell you why you need all of this. Uh, so, uh, and when you go in, you have to form a differential diagnosis for these patients, why they are in the ED departments. Here is a table that show you what are the most common presentations that these patients are gonna come with. These patients are high risk for bleeding, especially GI bleed. They have a high risk of uh, cardiac complications. They are heart failure patient. They might be still in heart failure despite having LVAD or they having an exacerbation of their heart failure. They might have, uh, have either atrial uh, or ventricular arrhythmias or, or present with a uh, with, uh, cause of chest pain or animals. They might have infection related to the LVAD or not related to the LVAD. They might have thrombosis of the LVAD uh, or they might present with stroke or intracranial hemorrhage, or they have a problem with the machine itself. They're giving an alarm that, okay, you have to deal with. So what are the questions you're gonna ask these patients? So they're gonna ask him, are you in a heart failure? Is the patient homolyzing? 
If the patient homolyzing and in heart failure, there's a, maybe a problem with the bump. They may have a, a bump thrombosis. Uh, if they're having a GI bleed, if they present with uh, symptoms and signs of anemia, if they have dark stools, uh, dark, uh, uh, if they have melina, uh, if they're pre presenting with infection of the, of the drive line, if they have a new neuro, a neuro deficit uh, or a headache, they have, may might have a stroke or intracranial hemorrhage, or if they have, they present with a trauma to the drive line or the, uh, if they are uh, LVAD machines giving an alarm. So what, uh, so how are you gonna examine these patients? Basically with any other uh, emergency patient, you're gonna do your general assessment, you're gonna do the ABC. Uh, but there are specific things you have to examine in these patients. You have to listen to the heart, looking for a hum of the bump machine. If you don't hear it, there is maybe a, maybe a bump failure. Uh, uh, you have to note that most of these patients will not gonna have any pulse. The reason for this, because of the bump providing continuous flow, so their uh, uh, aortic valve is, is not opening or bar uh, barely opening. So there's no difference in the pressure between the systolic and the systolic blood pressure. And that, that's why okay, you're not gonna feel a pulse in these patients. So how can you take their blood pressure? So you're gonna use your manual blood pressure as well as a Doppler. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna take the blood pressure using the Doppler and the first sound you're gonna hear is gonna be the map. And the normal map for this patient has to be between 60 and 80. If you have difficulty obtaining the blood pressure and if the, or the patient is unstable, it's better to insert an arterial line in these patients. And don't forget to get an ECG on this patient to see okay, no, if there are there any arrhythmias they, ha they are having. Then, okay, you're gonna move and examine the controller. You're gonna examine, okay, if, if the, uh, the batteries, if there is no uh, enough battery life, patients have two batteries. Uh, so you have to change one battery at a time. You have to make sure uh, all the external uh, connections are connected and you have to check uh, the display. You are, you're gonna find multiple values in the display. Majorly, okay, these are uh, the four uh, values you're gonna see in the display. The first one is the bump speed. This is the only uh, parameter that can be set on the device. The other parameters, uh, it's measured by the device itself and cannot be set. Uh, the second one is the power. Power is, uh, is what uh, the, the output uh, of the machine. Uh, it, it depends on the speed. Uh, it depends on the preload and the afterload. And, uh, and, and the power major okay, is not how much flow is gonna come out. The flow is estimated based on the power and the speed. Uh, and also you're gonna find about bus index. A bus index tell you uh, most, uh, because these patients still have some ventricular contraction and some of the flow is provided by their uh, native uh, ventricle. So the pulse index to you, uh, it's uh, major the average that produced by the left, ventr uh, left ventricle compared to the, to the bump uh, over 15 seconds. And it's helpful, especially in patients with transient cardiac uh, dysfunction. Uh, you're gonna use your uh, bocas scale in these patients, not only looking for uh, blur of unions and B lines uh, for the heart failure, but also to look at the right and left uh, chamber size, which can tell you mainly the reason why they present with hypotension. Uh, if they have uh, both uh, left and right ventricle are small, it's most likely to be, uh, they have a reduction in their preload, uh, secondary to bleeding or dehydration, uh, if they have a uh, small left ventricle, but large or right ventricle, it's most likely to be seconded to pulmonary hypertension, or they have a stimmy of their right ventricle. Uh, and if they have both of the, uh, both of the, of the ventricles are enlarged, more than likely to second to obstruction or, thump, uh, or, or bump thrombosis. Now, okay, I will move to speak about some of the specific uh, LPAD presentations and their management. The first one is hypotension. It's one of the common presentations for LPAD patients. You have to know that LPAD patients are highly preload dependent. So most of them will respond with just IV fluid, uh, volume resuscitation, either IV fluid or blood, depends on if they are bleeding. 
uh, you can tell based on the the flow shown in the uh, in the machine uh, if they uh, the cause also uh, also you can use your focus. If they had the uh, high flow uh, in the machine, it's most likely related to the after load. Uh, they might have asepsis or uh, as a result of or fast of fast or dilating medications. So you're gonna treat them with the IP fluids. You're gonna discontinue the the drug uh, antibiotics and you uh, need uh, you and you might need a uh, fast or breast If they have a low flow, it's most likely a preload issue or a, a problem with it with the heart or if there is an obstruction issue. And you're gonna treat based on the cause. One of the potential causes, uh, cause of the hypotension in this patient, something known as suction events. Uh, if the patient have a, a really bad a preload, uh, 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 the, there is no not much filling of the left ventricle, but the pump is, uh, is still working, trying to push blood out of the left ventricle. This would result in the both of the uh, uh, both walls of the ventricle to collapse, obstructing the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the exit, uh, the uh, the exit of the uh, of the pump. Uh, you treat this by giving uh, IV fluid and by reducing the speed of the elvat. Uh, the other issue is hypertension. Uh, in these patients, hypertension is uh, is tightly managed. Uh, as uncontrolled hypertension can exacerbate heart failure and worse renal dysfunction, as well as increase the risk of stroke in these patients. The management of hypertension, both in acute and chronic setting, is the same for non elvad patients. Almost all of these patients are both an antiplatelets and anticoagulant agents. Uh, the INR uh, goal is between two and three. Uh, same as with any mechanic, uh, with uh, same as with mechanical valve, we have to be careful in reversing these patients, and we take it on case to case basis. So you only reverse uh, anticoagulation in these patients if they are if they present with a life threatening bleed. So regarding bleeding, uh, the, uh, these patients are um, uh, are highly susceptible to GI bleed. Uh, there are multiple factors for that. Uh, they are an anticoagulant. Uh, because of the sheer stress uh, uh, caused by the bump on the blood, uh, they might have uh, blood dysfunction at as well as uh, uh, phone or brand factor dysfunction. The, uh, there's also found uh, in these patients uh, that uh, they are highly susceptible to have a GI, GI angiodysplasia. The reason for this is not fully understood but most likely secondary to oxidative stress caused by the machine itself. One of the presentations uh, they might present it with is bump thrombosis. Uh, so, how it's, uh, so how they usually present, they, this patient presents with symptoms of heart failure as well as hemolysis. If the machine is not functioning well and there's a thrombus forming within the machine, they ha the, the, the hemolysis inc increase and this will also result in inflammatory response and uh, increase in uh, prothrombotic factors and uh, prothrombotic ca cascade. So you have more, more, uh, more and more thrombosis within the machine itself, but within the bump. So how can you tell these patients might be in uh, having thrombosis? Uh, based on the clinical suspicion, they present to with heart failure and symptoms and signs of hemolysis, and uh, they're gonna uh, present with very high LDH which happened secondary to hemolysis. Uh, they say, okay, it's no more than 2.5, uh, higher than normal. It's more like su suggestive, they might have bump thrombosis. These patients are treated with IV heparin as well as IV fluid to protect the, to protect the kidney. Uh, they also can present uh, because we have a prosthetic uh, equipment within the body. Uh, there's a high risk of infection of that uh, prosthetic. Uh, but the, uh, but it's not, it's not easy to treat these patients uh, that present with infection compared to patients with, for example, knee transplant or an I, a central IV line, just remove the source, remove the prosthetic. Uh, for these patients, it's really more complicated. Uh, it's most likely the cause of infection, it's most likely coming from the drive line, from the uh, percutaneous, uh, uh, percutaneous uh, line, 
uh, because mostly uh, the patients uh, pull, uh, had the traumas uh, to it uh, and pull it out, which will break the barrier between the skin and the, and the, and the, and the tube uh, and the uh, and the dry line. Uh, other, they also can present with the, a bucket infection as well as surgical site infection with uh, and invad endocarditis. Uh, bacteria is the same with any prosthetic uh, equipment uh, in the body. Staphylococcus coagulus native staph. You're gonna uh, these ones uh, we have to uh, uh, be, uh, be transferred to the alpha centers and be managed by them. Uh, for us, okay, so now we send for culture. Uh, we do uh, wound dressing and we start patient on antibiotics. Uh, these patients also at high risk for arthemias, both atrial and ventricular arthemias, secondary to scarring, secondary to suction events, uh, as well as other electrolyte abnormalities. You treat them same as you treat non elvad uh, patient. If they are stable, uh, you're going to rate control with beta blockers and rhythm control with amiodarone as first lines. If they are unstable, unstable you're going to cardiovert them. Lastly, okay, if they present with cardiac arrest, the recommendations by the manufacturers to avoid cardiac uh, CBR in these patients. So what actually you can do? So basically you're gonna, and because you, you cannot assess their pulse, uh, so you're gonna do the initial assessment we talk about. You're gonna listen for any uh, hum, looking for uh, if there's any bump failure, you're going to insert a central, uh, 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 an art line. You're going to intubate these patients uh, and monitor their entitled CO2. You're, go you're going to give them IV fluids. Uh, you're going to uh, shake the machine, uh, treat reversible causes. Uh, some of, uh, some of the, these machines have an external manual bump. If you see it, okay, you can use the bump to, to try to bump the blood using it. Uh, if you still don't have response, uh, as, uh, CBR is your last result, so you have to do it to save the patient. Uh, finally, you okay, so, uh, uh, how you manage alarm, uh, 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 if there's any alarm of the system, you have to shake the connection, shake the battery. Uh, each, each machine of the LFAD has specific alarms. You can look at this from the, the, book, uh, the machine booklet or from the internet. Uh, here is a table of some of alarm you can see with the uh, one uh, with the heart rate uh, two. Uh, you can look at the table and uh, see it. But because no, mostly if the patient's table, uh, these alarms are managed by the alpha team, so you don't know, uh, need to worry about it much. Uh, so my take home points for this talk: know that alphas are re uh, preload dependent, so most of these patients will respond to uh, volume resuscitation. Uh, make sure to assess the map in these patients, their flu status, and whether the bump is working or not. And make sure to use your focus skill to assess for right and left ventricle chambers uh, sizes, which can tell you about what the reason for their presentation. And that's it. Hopefully, I cover my talk in 15 minutes. Or less. Anybody have any question? Thank you, Abdullah. That was like perfectly timed. <laughs> Um, there's one question uh, from uh, Michael. Uh, what is the approximate lifetime for an LVAD? Uh, usually, okay, it's 15 years. It depends. Uh, mostly, okay, so they get it uh, for, uh, if, uh, for life. You only need to change the outside uh, structure unless they get a really bad infection. They have to intervene. But otherwise, uh, it's, they get it for life. If uh, you, are, you are the end stage. If you are not the end stage until you get the heart transplant, or until okay, so now your uh, left ventricle recovered. Um, and uh, it's kind of funny. I actually had an LVAD patient like last week um, and um, the perfusionists are really, really nice. So if you have a chance to have an LVAD patient, um, they actually explain like the, like you were talking about the flow to see if it's um, high or low and to assess the volume status. Um, they'll go through, through the little monitor with you if you ask them to, they're super nice. So, um, but I wish I had this talk before I saw the LVAD uh, patient. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any other questions. Um, Abdullah, I actually really like your slides. Would you mind sharing them uh, with us? Can I share them with the group? Yeah, yes, I will, I will share it with you. 